about one o'clock in the morning <laughs> and the full moon is very bright. Uh, I'm up, my neighbor is up, so I'm sitting here in the studio and make one last video in Tiruvannamalai before I leave later this morning. Uh, I want to talk about pleasure or happiness, attachment, and liberation. Now, you know, so many religions, in fact, all religions that I know of, advise the uh, avoidance or at least the regulation of sex life. Even Tantra, which accepts uh, the beauty and sacredness of sex, advises it to be regulated, to be kept as a sacred function, not just empty self-indulgence. Why is this? In fact, the very word religion comes from Latin, Re and legere, which means to bind back or to, to withdraw or restrain the senses. Why is this? You know, and if you ask <laughs> a, a dogmatic, dualistic religionist, they'll say, oh, because sex is sinful, it's the original sin, and so on. Like that. And no, that, that's not it. That's just a rationalization to cover the fact that they don't know. Huh? They don't know. They're just following blindly some previous teachers. But we know. Why sex life has to be restrained. It's actually part of a much broader principle that... One should not become attached to pleasure. And this is not out of a desire for self-mortification or a feeling of guilt. Um, that, that's, these are all, you know, just uh, associated or rationalized reasonings. The real reason is that when we become attached to pleasure, it is a cause of suffering. And the more pleasurable and the more attached we become, and the longer we maintain that attachment, the more suffering when it's over. We've all heard that expression. Whatever has a beginning also has an end. So even the most wonderful things in this world have a beginning. And so they also have an end. You can't get around this because it's built into the very structure of the universe that we live in. So, the wise person avoids becoming attached to pleasure. It's not that we're against pleasure. <laughs> pleasure is very nice while it's happening. But then when it's over, we have withdrawal symptoms, isn't it? So the idea is, not that pleasure is bad or wrong or sinful or any of that other stuff, 
But we're just trying to avoid the eventual suffering that comes from being attached to it. That's all. You know, um, my Adi Guru, Srila Prabhupada, used to say, make the best use of a bad bargain. This human life, or any life <laughs> within this universe, is a bad bargain. And the reason it's a bad bargain is that it's temporary. It's impermanent. And it's unsatisfactory. It doesn't really meet our expectations. And finally, it's not self. This body, uh, the mind, this world, all the objects in it are not self. So, of course, there's going to be some difference of opinion. There's going to be different views and conflicting actions and feelings. In other words, suffering. Now, human life on planet Earth is described in the Vedas as the best chance for liberation. And that even the demigods desire to take birth here so that uh, they can increase their chances of attaining moksha. Why is that? Because in human life, there is pleasure, but it's not overwhelming pleasure like in the planets of the demigods. And there is suffering, but it's not overwhelming suffering like in the hellish planets, the lower planets. So there's a scope, there's an opportunity in this human life to do the sadhana that leads to ultimate release. In the Bhagavad Gita, in the 18th chapter, actually begins in the 17th chapter with the description of the three gunas, qualities or modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Activities in the mode of goodness are described as those that lead towards liberation. So, <clears throat> religious sacrifice, study of the Vedas, service of the spiritual master, and uh, any kind of devotional service or uh, rituals to offer to God. Uh, these are all activities leading towards liberation, meditation, uh, detachment, like that. So these are in the mode of goodness, sattva guna. Then there's the mode of passion, rajoguna. Rajoguna is born of unlimited desires. Huh? I want this, I want that, I want three of those. <laughs> so... Because it's born of desire, it leads to suffering. And finally, there's the mode of ignorance, tamoguna, which is just suffering and misery from one end to the other. So a spiritual person, spiritual-minded person, begins from the mode of passion, which is where we find ourselves in human life performing activities that lead to suffering. And he begins to question these. Why am I suffering? Is there any way out of it? And so this leads to study of the Vedas and performance of religion and so on, the mode of goodness. So this is why a spiritual-minded person tries to avoid not only sex life, but any kind of material pleasures as far as possible because it's a bad bargain. Huh? It's, a, it's a raw deal. It's a cheating business, a false promise. Maya, that which is not. 
When we become attracted to sense pleasures, for example, and not only sex life, but any kind of sense pleasures, the mind says to us, oh, this is wonderful. This is going to be great, you know. This is going to be fantastic, and it's going to last forever. The implication is it's going to last forever. But nothing lasts forever because it has a beginning. It also has an end. And the more that pleasure is prolonged, the more we become conditioned by it, the more we become attached to it, the more we become identified with it as a part of our identity. One thinks, oh, I am the husband or wife of so-and-so. Uh, I am the father or mother of these children. I am the owner of this house or this car. I am the, you know, whatever our job description is, you know. And we become attached to those things. We become identified with those things. We think this is who I am. I am this body. I am this mind. And so then, when this pleasure or identification or whatever it is goes away, as it will in the course of time, we suffer. This is mental suffering which is far worse and more prolonged than physical suffering because it deals with our very identity, our source of who we think we are. <laughs> so what do you do if you're in business, let's say, and somebody tries to make a bad bargain with you? You know, they try to sell you on something and, and you'd know they're going to cheat you. What do you do? Well, the only thing to do is to back away. No thanks. See ya. And the same is true of life, of these various pleasures. That when the mind and senses present these pleasures, so-called pleasures, huh? It's a false promise. It's not going to last forever. And it's not going to be perfect either. There's always going to be something wrong. Because it's not self. So, the best thing to do is to say, no thanks. I'm not going to get involved. I'm not going to be uh, identified with this pleasure, whatever it is. Uh, well, let's look at the, in the case of sex life. Have you ever engaged in sex and uh, something that seems very exciting and pleasurable, right? As soon as you finish, it's like, eh, <laughs> meh, you know? Uh, that thing which seemed so attractive and wonderful when we were excited about it, as soon as there's no physical desire that's satisfied, then eh, we don't have any interest in it again. And we wouldn't want to experience it again, even if we could. At least not right now. <laughs> so why should we go through this suffering? this endless repetition of this cycle of being attracted by desire and engaging with it and then being let down and have to give it up anyway. Why should we take another material body after this one? Huh? It's already we're in this bad bargain. We took this material body thinking, oh, I'm going to enjoy. And yeah, there's a little enjoyment there, but there's also suffering comes along with the territory. So don't be fooled. Don't uh, take another bad bargain. But start drawing the lines. Start saying, oh, 
you know, I, I could be in this relationship with this person, let's say. But I know this relationship is going to end someday. Why should I invest time, energy, my feelings? Why should I put energy into this thing knowing that eventually it's going to fail? It's going to collapse. It's going to be over. Why should I set myself up? For suffering. See, when you develop this attitude, this realization, then there's no more any need for religious rules and regulations. Huh? There's no more any need for austerity, you know, um, because now these things are just natural. You're going, oh, no thanks, you know, thanks for the offer, but I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm going to pass. And this is how you become free. This is how you remain free. Along with realizing the self, and who we really are, is Brahman. Pure consciousness. No mind, no body, no activities, no attachment. No suffering. This is the key to becoming free and staying free. So please, if you don't take any other advice from me, please accept this little realization, which is actually a big realization, and that very few people ever get to. Because this is really the last uh, milestone on the path to complete liberation and enlightenment. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.